Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda card with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Today, featuring a one versus one on Bow Lowlands. Yes, indeed, I know you're quite excited now. We're going to be seeing a one versus one on Bow Lowlands. Who shall be fighting in the Lowlands? Well, right here in the northern half. Yes, now what's the northern half? Is Opium, the fiend of Opium, fighting for the Panzer Elite. Fighting for the 12th SS Hitler Jugend somewhere in France, somewhere in some lowlands in France. Who knows? I'm not great on geography. Opposing him, though, shall be WMWX, which I have no idea what's supposed to mean. They're fighting for the Commonwealth, fighting for the Armored Guards. Or is it the Guards Armored? Either way, though, here he is. And let's get right down to it. My apologies, right there. Hiccup. Something wanting to be a hiccup. But we are seeing their infantry section heading right out. Of course, the recce section, of course, as the British did for some reason refer not to as recon or reconnaissance. They basically just called it recce, which I'd rather sounds a bit cooler than recon. Oh, look at us, we're doing recon. <coughs> Anyways, Pantagon is on the way here for Opium. Schwimmwagen, in fact, we are in fact seeing a Schwimmwagen. That's a bit rare, honestly. But the Schwimmwagen for Opium. Driving towards the east, straight for the fuel point, possibly the munitions point next. Panzer is on the way, Gewehr 43 being equipped, and we are seeing a fuel point also being the target right here. For WMWX, we'll just call him WM. Wild Monty. No, I'm not sure that means what it is that. Lieutenant on the way as well. Lieutenant Watch is the source. And we are seeing the headquarters truck, of course, on the way towards the fuel point. Not unusual to see British players do that. I mean, the lieutenant then pack up, sort of start. And looks like the Panzergrenade is on a pretty swift route towards the fuel point here as well. In fact, using his uh, initial Panzergrenade to secure points. Quite interesting, quite interesting. Of course, he might soon be running into this reconnaissance section. Although that might still take some time. And of course, no Panzergrenade is are not the troops that are the fastest actually taking points. They need actually an upgrade to sort of even decent and otherwise they're pretty slow. Just a little detail right there, but headquarters are rhyming. Although so far again no connection to the fuel until then. But there we go. And of course also securing the high munitions point next to it while the recon chaps or recce chaps head straight for the Panzergrenadier. Uh, although there are several now converging on this western point. Mar armed with a Lee Enfield rifles, Mark II, I think, or is it three? There were several marks for that one. No, looks like he's gathering up his Panzergrenades before launching the counterattack. And he's quickly getting out of there, rather fancying, of course, there might be a counterattack moving in. Nine Panzergrenadiers strong. Absolutely no British reinforcements for those chaps. So, of course, they will be in what you call slight trouble. And each additional panzer gun is arriving right there. Reconnaissance chaps coming under fire. And, and there we go, another infantry section arriving for WM. While the others take up position in the barn. Ready to repel any German assaults as there are several windows right here for that exact purpose. And looks like the lieutenant now is joining in with the infantry section, of course, the reconnaissance section as well. This could be a pretty. Nasty British assault if pulled off correctly. How will OPM react to this? How indeed. And there we go. Opening up on the Panzer Grenadiers. Ten man strong. The Panzer is a bit more spread out. Look. Apparently luring them up here. Others are waiting, perhaps hoping to set hit the flank. Lieutenant exposed. Be careful, WM. Careful, W. You could get him caught off on his own and cut down. Larger fight going on here. Lots of Panzers versus lots of infantry. Why is he taking the point while under fire? That only makes it easier. Oh dear, oh dear. Be careful. And there we go. Lieutenant getting hit by all of the Panzer Grenadiers. All at the same time, of course, they are exposing themselves. And oh, Lieutenant went down. No sniper fire though from the British. It looks like they could have finished off one Panzer Grenadier section right there. Or team. Of course, I'm referring to everyone as sections. Great job, Brits. But rather heavy losses for the Germans. Only the Brits also bled a bit, but I mean, 
German Panzer guns are certainly much more expensive to enforce. A lot of them lying right down here. And we're in fact down to pretty much four Panzer gunner teams, what, down to one man each. And that's about eight Panzer grenadiers. Oh, that's eight Panzer grenadiers down, which times 45 is quite a bit. We're talking about close to 250 manpower. If not 255, I mean, that's an entire Panzer grenade team he's having to pay in reinforcements. By the way, quickly securing the fuel points here while the Schwimm Magnum, of course, in the meanwhile, has secured the entire eastern half of the map quite calmly, quite nicely. Not really caring about what's going on there. Enjoying his Schwimm Magnum and listening to the propaganda ministry on his radio. Like any good German soldier. Logistik company going up here, no further anything's coming out of that. Of course he might be hoping for additional buildings right after that, or of course he could be going for increased squad sizes and hope to do some nasty damage to the Brits, but of course that would not be wise, So of course a British player on the fuel point can quickly get a field support truck. Of course Opium is not aware of that, but it's not a pretty bad assumption to make, of course, in particular on Bow Lowlands that he's going to go straight for the fuel point and thus straight for some light armor. So in that sense, it might be a bit better for him to sort of get some other building, some other structure. He's only got the fuel to get something armoured. Well, a Panzer support command. Reconnaissance section getting high and down. The Revenge of Opia moving in. Twelve Panzer Grenadiers. And a swift British counter-attack with fifteen Tommies. One of them in the section, no upgrades though, and lots of Gewehr 43, so being equipped for the Panzer Grenadiers, thus increasing their firepower quite a bit. And the other one is for some reason up right there, the fuel point not assisting its comrades. Panzer Grenadiers are bleeding quite a bit, and there we go, Bren guns opening up as well, thus forcing a retreat for the 12th SS troops. Points being continued to be secured right there in the center, the Brits are a bit low on territory, looks like a Panzer Support Command is going up. Hands going to continue to suffer. The Bren guns bring nice, although the British are certainly being themselves. Another lieutenant joins in most heroically with his Sten gun. And the Panzers are being forced away, leaving behind only one team, three men, to face off this British juggernaut of Lee Enfields and Brens. Schwimmagen on the move. Doctrinal choice, and he's in fact gone for tank destroyer, laying down a mine, and a captain arrives, and <laughs> oh, he runs straight into it. Oh, you ground. silly captain. And looks like we are seeing a Panzer Support Command upgrade. It could be that Opium is in fact going straight for the Panzer IV Infantry Support Tank. And these Panzer guys need to get out of there now. They're going to be outmatched by the Bren guns on the Bren section. Already there, taking quite a bit of damage. Retreat, retreat. They can't really go down easily to a brand section on the retreat. And oh dear, almost dying, but he just barely makes it. Recon section doing terrible damage here to the Panzer. There's two down almost pretty swiftly. Even one getting sniped in this case. Although, again, why well, didn't do that earlier when he could have knocked out an entire team? It's beyond me. Oh, and it looks like Ludwig there makes it just barely. And a Stuart light tank arrives for WM. Which is a bit of a nasty thing right there for the Panzer Grenadiers. With five of them, in fact. Four of them equipped with Gewehr 43s. So rather excessive that. Which is oh dear, mine laid down by the Shrimp Magnet actually damaged the engine off the Stuart light tank, but it is still there, it can still go, it can still move. Shrimp magnet down another mine right in front of it. Oh dear. And the mine goes off, immobilizing the Stuart light tank. It was actually quite a bit expensive in munitions. Lost him a Shrimp magnet, but that Stuart's not going anywhere anytime soon. Since I don't believe Mr. WM has any sappers. No chaps to repair it. And now he's actually even got a lieutenant for it, or a commander sort of poking out, sort of wondering, am I going to die in this tiny little yank tank? Because the steward was an American, an American tank. Infantry section goes over the bridge. 
rather realise that it might be better to wait for our lieutenant to actually do most of the walking and pointing. Looks like he's making a larger push now. Lieutenant on the way. Stuart sort of still stuck. Panzer's getting reinforced. Defensive operations on the way. He's holding a big break while he's gathering up his forces. Panzer IV on the way. And there we go. Sappers arriving. Fully kitted up. Captain Old's on the move. Hopefully, snow not better condition actually. And now going in there. A grim advance. Panzer IV ready. Although this stage of all these were pretty rare. This was a much older variant of the Panzer IV and before it was upgunned with a high velocity gun. And the only ones really remaining were usually those were used in training units. Which in some cases were actually used in Normandy and later in Market Garden against any attackers. But there we go. Even this low velocity gun can do nasty things to the rear section of the steward. He has managed to de immobilize it, but sadly he made a mistake here. Which was he kept repairing the steward when he probably should have been as quickly as possible been firing his sappers at it. So that was a bit of a nasty move there. But there we go, going for the cutoff points instead. But of course, now he does have a small Panzer Force with a Panzer IV leaning it. Panzer is to follow in at the rear, but no, they're busy with the reconnaissance section. Just getting reinforced. Come on, opium. But let's go have a look at WM. His troops now being hunted down by the mighty Panzer IV. Sort of mighty. The workhorse of the Third Reich, anyways. Second most reduced armored vehicle. Well, armored fighting vehicle in the entire German force. The only one to really outdo it is the Stug 3. Gee. And that's actually by a very slim margin. We are talking about less than a hundred armored fighting vehicles to sort of actually outnumber it. So that's certainly something to think about. And that was probably only because the Stug 3 factories got bombed. And to sort of keep making more Stugs, they actually had to convert another a Panzer IV factory into producing Stug 4s. If that, if that hadn't happened, you know, perhaps there might have been more Panzer IVs or they might have been equal. Oh dear, this infantry section is a lot of trouble. Veterans you want already for the Panzer IV. And an infantry section goes down for WM. Major casualties indeed, Mr. British announcer. And this reconnaissance section is not doing well either versus these offensive veterans. See Panzer is increasing accuracy, increasing rate of fire. Piets, more Piets. Armor command truck up and he's... Oh no. Going for kangaroos, hippity hoppity. Not that sort of kangaroo. The sort of armored bestial one, which is the bane of many a Wehrmacht commander. Although, thankfully, the pet patch made it a lot less ridiculously offensive in that it decreased the health and made it not quite as fast. But the kangaroo was used, sort of an early precursor to the sort of armored personnel carriers we know today, although the Germans actually sort of had their own variant in mind with the full kitten, which was actually a Hetzer sort of converted into an APC sort of thing, still opened up though and there we go Hetzer on the move, they didn't have those in Normandy, they only sort of really came about by the time of uh, Operation well, Wacht am Rhein they sort of attacking the Ardennes But moving in there, Bren section, lots of sappers and a lieutenant. Of course, facing off against a Hetzer and a Panzer IV. Nice hit to the rear, although the German armor does take some light damage right there due to the Piet rounds flying off. Looks like he's going straight for the German base. All three victory points more or less though being in hands of the Germans, he doesn't really seem to care. In fact, it looks like the majority of his army is and currently that one tiny little infantry carrier charging in back feeling falling away some shots hit others don't there we go heavy damage and the context in running into some pants but right hand whisking slowed down oh yeah he's buttoned down the head so he's buttoned it down but looks like the heads will make it out of there just barely and looks like the kangaroo will make it out of there as well it looks like a stack hound is on the way the British actually being users of the stack hunt for quite some time. The Americans, not quite never really. They sort of stuck to the Greyhound and sort of variants of that. 
but never the stack out. Never. And the Panzer team pushed off. Realizing, of course, currently that OPN can't win by direct confrontation. He's basically hoping to harass his opponent. Strike wherever he is, and of course, drain him for victory points. Which is not an entirely bad idea, although he still needs to deliver some blows, otherwise the British player is basically going to be amassing armor until he can knock him out. Which is not really optimal either. At least not for the 12th SS. Oh, the Panzer team went down. Telamine almost done, but no, they were caught before they were able to finish. Less good there. Panzer is moving out. He might want some additional things sooner or later. Panzer fall with defensive efficiency. Hetzers and Panzer is hoping to perhaps finish off that telemine. But no, the Kangaroo is moving in and there's barely any support for it. We constant chap taking heavy losses to the Panzer IV, but there we go, charging right at it. Telemine, I don't think it's finished. And the heads is getting pelted with P at rounds. It's buttoned. It can't do anything. But another heads has arrived. Looks like he was building something there, but cancel it. Heads are down. Kaput. Nicht mehr. While the Staghound faces off against the Panzer IV. Panzer is retreating. Panzer IV in trouble. Probably and the Kangaroo probably moving in to deal with it. Heads are arriving to support. Not looking very splendorous for Mr. Opium at the moment. And we are seeing now a firefly to deal with in these sort of those tank destroyers right there. Kangaroo taking heavy loss of stack and goes down, but now again buttoning up. He could, yes, he does get additional defensive efforts. He even locks it down to increase the rate of fire. Hetza moves in. It is buttoned down still. Kangaroo, though, hopes to save the day. I mean, Hetza hopes to save the day, not Kangaroo. Christ almighty! Troops getting squished. I actually think the lieutenant went down, but the Panzer falls out of control! Heavy losses on both sides already! But the heads are... Oh dear, it could be going down, but no, it doesn't. It makes it out of there. Of course, the Bergtig and Al could rather salvage that heads and that Panzer void of sight, but no. It actually looks like he wrecked that Panzer wrapped expecting. A Berger Tiger to actually sort of try and salvage. Which is not a bad idea. Of course, again, getting a Berger Tiger. Lieutenant, though, on the run. He's got more lieutenants. But, of course, he's losing quite a few junior officers that way. And there we go. Firefly ready. 17-pounder gun mounted on the Sherman chassis. And what sort of doctrine has he gone for? He's gone for Royal Canadian Artillery. Sector is being overrun. And that's only going to do some nasty things if properly aimed. If not so properly aimed, not quite as much, I imagine. But again, going for the victory points. Basically hoping again if WM basically sticks to the kangaroo stack and sort of tries to sort of blob around. Well, he's focused all of his forces. He's not going to be able to protect all of those victory points. And in that sense, he's sort of trying to do a bit of harassment, a bit of disruption, basically a bit of sneakiness. Enemy unit has been knocked out. Oh dear, sounds like someone lost it on the German side. Kampfgruppe Company going up. Casual clearing station ready. British troops advancing. And oh dear, looks like the flag feeling that was quite and knocked out by the Firefly. Leading the way, not really fearing much at the moment. Hets are rather on its own. And what could be going on here in the German base? Could he go in for Panzer Schrex? That could certainly work, I suppose. In particular, since he's going to tank destroy, of course, he will get this sort of upgrade, which gives him two Panzer Schrex for each team. So that could work. Also, fun fact, the Panzer Elite Panzer Shrek is actually weaker than the Wehrmacht Panzer Shrek. Probably not a lot of people knowing that little fact. And now there we go. The assault has begun. And the 12th SS base is in peril. 
appeared around the Duke Street Company, wishing it was further back in the base. And there we go, Lucas D Company's down, no more logistics. Well, probably, but not that effective. Panzer is getting pelted, heavy losses. And looks like he soon might be getting those Panzer Shreks. Flak feeling, finding weight, not quite connecting with anything. And sounds like the stack can actually hit the telemine, damaging its engine. We are seeing a heroic charge for some reason while they're standing still. That's probably the most unheroic uncharge I've ever seen. Stack on rolling in. Heads are repaired. Opium in pretty dire trouble. There we go. Pancha Shrek. Duel, in fact. But artillery going in. Sending away the Pancha swiftly, although the one with the dual Pancha ready. Same snow, no full pants because he's lost. Heads are arriving, although badly damped. I wonder if he actually has expert repairs. I'd imagine he would have gone for that, but I'm not entirely sure it looks like it. And again, that's an upgrade that is necessary. But more pants are arriving. Could it be tank busters as well? Yes, indeed. He needs as many pants as fast as possible. He cannot wait for just some to upgrade. Heavy damage to the British armor. And let's return to Opium, and let's actually start a bit for the mid-game analysis. What is the current situation? Well, it's a Brit bit of Brit dire. Oh dear, Dane, that pun, which was unintended, I fear. Now, it's a bit dire for the Germans, caught in their base, lots of British hounding them at their, the gates. Stack hounds, kangaroos, fireflies, and more stack hounds on the way. But they do hold most of the victory points, and there is the seed of destruction in the British behavior of basically sort of just hammering up for these sort of heavy blows, which of course means he can strike really hard one place, but of course, if he runs into a problem, of course, his opponent just tries to avoid, of course, he can run into a problem himself, and he can't sort of lose through the victory points method, but still, the sort of heavy panzer anti-tank as it's now being sort of a raid against him could of course also prove to be his demise all those panzer strikes despite the best of the stack arm with his 50 caliber the british commander might want to consider sort of you know securing the victory points and then laying down defenses either consider perhaps a buff force or a vickers machine gun because just hammering in his way like that could of course actually prove to be his undoing alongside those victory points but his return to the fight panzer X flying Stack hound down. Heavy damage to the kangaroo. All Brits get out. Hoping to repel. Five now almost done, but so the tank busters. Oh dear, Rux. No, they died. And the others are being, f being forced off as well. Entering enough, those other panthers are not being there. Used to repel that head as quickly as possible. And stack hound arrives from the flank. Fire fighting, heavy damage, Panthers rushing in. Lucky there for the heads, a shot actually bounced off the front. And will the Panthers X get the Firefly? Yes, indeed, a small victory there. Allowing the heads to fight much less threatened. But the Brits are still holding on right here at the edge of the base, they still hold most of the map. But will they utilize it properly? It Call in. Our munition stores are under attack. And will they actually try to hinder the movement of their opponents? I mean, they have lots of sappers. They could lay down lots of mines and really do a lot of damage to those Panzer Grenadiers. I still don't think he's actually managed to get expert repairs oh, because he's only just gotten the Kampfgruppe company. company. I mean, it would be, it'd be a great idea to get that. And he's just getting more Panzer Grenadiers. Probably to get more Panzer Shreks. There we go. Mehr Panzer Schreck, immer mehr. We have gained the ability to instruct the troops on tank awareness. Tank awareness ready. Another stack hand for King George. Many more. Will there be further fireflies? And will there ever be someone to repair this poor lonely Berg Tiger left devastated by the roadside? There we go. Additional Panzer Schrecks.
So what shall happen now, except me speeding up to get things going again. The both sides are taking a breath, a breather, getting ready for another assault, another huge fight. There we go. Stackhouse leading the way. Small armoured convoy. And the kangaroo just sort of driving about a bit drunkenly. Heads us with Panzerix creating a rather solid anti tank team. Although, well, of course, the hits can deal with infantry to certain extents. Most victory points are still in the hands of, the, of Opium and the Panzer Elite. Stack count rushes in. And he goes to the third victory point at the far west. And a lieutenant with a Piet. Oh dear, this could be trouble. Artillery right on the retreat path. Stack count goes down. Hiccups. Heads are getting buttoned up. Quite a bit of resource though getting floated. What is his plan? What is his plot? His scheme? And he's going for the Panzer Jäger command. Could it be that he's hoping to get armored cars, martyrs, or might he be going straight for the Panther battle group? Oh dear, these Panzers are in a lot of trouble. They need to get back reinforced. And that's quickly before the kangaroo rushes in. But a stack out is also on the prowl. And it's actually taking quite a bit of damage, and there we go. Panzer Shrek's doing quite a bit of damage as well. And the British are quick to get out of there. The armored guard's not quite fancying that much anti tank fire. And again, Panzer's going to assume what they can at the far flanks, but now getting pushed off. Still no mines from the British commander. Panzer Jäger command up. What shall we be seeing? Panzer Jäger command upgrade. So we might be seeing either Marlers or Panthers, although in this situation, Panthers will not be a bad idea. To put it mildly. Our supply lines are broken. We have territory out of supply. It's sort of funny to note how little his opponent actually sort of pays attention to the victory points. His reconstruction could have gone there secured, or he instead he went straight for the munitions. Less good, at least he's doing something over here in the west. But he is quickly draining out of victory points. He needs to do something about it. And that's bloody damn quick. There we go. Yeah, you command upgrade ready. Panther battle group on the way, so obviously we are going to be seeing Panthers. Opium down to only Panzer Grenadiers essentially. And a few flak feelings covering the eastern part of his base. While WM is having a larger armored force. Will be a bit mixed. And a lot of stack arms. There we go. Panthers ready to be called in. Panzer Grenadiers, some with offensive veterans, others not. But mostly though, they all miss. Oh dear, Panzer Shrek dropped. Oh, that's just terrible luck. And another Panzer Shrek dropped. Imagine the trouble if someone who picked it picked all those Panzer Shreks up and they weren't German. That would be dangerous. But usually you don't try to hit a target from a range with the Panzer Shreks. The Panzer Shreks, now again, is sort of anti-tank weaponry in this stage. They were rocket-based. Now in this stage of the war, were usually for much closer, closer engagement. For longer arrangements, you usually had tank destroyers or anti-tank gun. Firefly now moving towards these stack hounds and other things moving over there as well. Or are they going straight for the base? Panthers almost there. Let's just beat this up once more. Very low on victory points though. And there we go, the Panthers arrive.
whatever is going on. There we go, finally going for another victory point. About damn time, WM. That's not very British. Our supply lines are broken. We have territory out of supply. Oh, well, I suppose it is, considering Margaret Garden, whether we only had a target on yet. I own the targets, anyways. Well, timing, anyways. Lieutenant popping up with his Piat. And going for the final victory point about bloody damn time. Pound this moving eastwards. Fireflies getting out there and looks like, oh dear, the kangaroo hits a telemine. It's mobilized. Will the Panthers get it? Will the Pantrix get it? What will get it? Just get it, damn you, before it's repaired. And of course, moving about in negative cover like this with the tank is going to mean it's going to be moving very, very incredibly slowly. So try to avoid that. But sadly, Kangaroo is quickly put together by that Panzer X. Will they do something? Another mine hit! Destroyed engine! Down! Coming up with a few troops remaining inside. Lieutenant pulls up, Veteran Z2 even. And the stack hounds on the prowl for the Panther, hitting it all in the rear. Panzer getting picked up, but he's taking losses. Panzer is though quitting, pushed off. Like the bits are getting pinned down. Oh, he's suppressed. Fireflies arrived. Oh dear, the Panthers caught. Out of control. Ling behind only one Panther for opium to turn the tide with. And at WM, what's going on there? He's got priests. He's floating a ridiculous amount of resources. Getting another kangaroo, but come on, man. Could at least move that headquarters command track over to another fuel point or something. But don't be floating a thousand manpower. Point is being seized. In particular when you're not the side that can actually call in pa King Tigers or King Tigers. And at least if you're not going to call in a priest self propelled again, call in something else. Stag hounds moving in, Pants gets caught. Opium though not giving up despite extensive losses. Particularly on the armored section now. Target target has been out. And losing another Panzer Grenade team. He's still moving on. Still probably going towards the victory points. Still got quite a few Panzer Shrek's in hand. And another Firefly on the way. Goodness gracious. Trying to secure victory points. Sappers unsupervised by a lieutenant who is standing there with veterancy free. Again, don't go floating resources like that. No idea why he is insisting on that. Pants are suppressed, but they still manage to secure that central victory point. And looks like the Panzer Shrek team has something in his mind. Could it be? Could it be? He might be going straight for the heart of the British. The headquarters command truck. And the Panzer Shrek station. Although that's not really managing much at the moment. Four Panzer Shreks. Panzer Shrek station down. Supply lines Jerry's attempting to secure Second Firefly ready for WM. Oh my god, doing what they can, but there we go, Brent Gunner's holding out. But will it be enough? Headquarters command truck getting absolutely pelted with Panzer Shrek. And there we see a Stankhound arriving. Headquarters could be going down though, and there we go. Now he's going to need that. Some of all that manpower to get something fresh out on the field. Meanwhile, he's not going to be getting anything except manpower. And now he's just setting up right there. Not even bothering to secure a fuel point. Oh, cheap. And looks like once Pantrick team might be going down, leaving behind a Panzer Schreck. German base exposed. Push going on. T 
two fireflies and again a kangaroo filled with Piet Sappers. This is not looking good. German base once more in peril, but once more Panthers are there to the rescue. Stack counts getting going down first. Where are they? Come on! Fireflies moving in close, but of course be careful of those Panzer Shreks. There we go. Main gun destroyed. Another one moving up on the flank. Panzer support command down. Kangaroo down. Veterancy free for the Panzer Shrek Panzer Grenadiers. Pantrek obtained for the Sappers. Main gun dest engine destroyed, and now the Firefly, uh, the stack gun is down. British getting out of there as well. Only the Fireflies and a few stack guns now. Panther though taking heavy damage. He needs defensive veterans. He needs to get out of there, and he needs some expert repairs. Main de engine destroyed. Not main engine destroyed. It's not like it has a secondary. And another stack hound down. This could be what Opium needs to really sort of break out. His opponent's suffering quite some heavy losses. He's just lost. And command truck, he's lost several stack hounds. A kangaroo. And he's not got a lot of victory points left either, although he's currently holding them all. But of course, Christian is. Will we be seeing any sort of, you know. Expert repairs to sort of quickly repair the Panthers and get them back in action. Least damage Panther pulling out, or well, moving out, with some rather extensively equipped Panthers, Panthers, and a Piat. And another Kangaroo getting ready. Kangaroo madness, this is. And the lieutenant left behind not to support the assault. However, shall he live? Quite nicely, apparently. No, the lieutenant actually gets harder to hit with more veterans he gets. So that's a nice little detail there. Well, let's speed up this little bit of fun. <coughs> and a Firefly moving in again. Looks like he also lost the Firefly then, I wasn't quite aware of that. Oh yes, never mind. But Panther getting button again, getting pelted with Piat, but another Panther moving up. And of course the Firefly. Might be an to focus on the one closer to you. Oh dear, Kangaroo went down and the Firefly could be going down due to the sort of poor choice in targets. And no shot goes off there, he does not manage to knock it out even, so that was a bit of a waste. Still he is managing to contain his Axis opponent, the 12th SS Panzer Division is still Hold up in the base of the no, self. Offensive veterans needs two Panzer Grandiers. A bit trying to advance but running into problem due to the rather strong position by the wrecked kangaroo. Panchecks and Piet and Bren guns. But Panthers are holding out. And now the Panthers are moving in as well. Panther could be going down, but so could the Firefly. Who shall win this? Oh dear, Panther check. And it gets the Firefly. And it gets it. Another kangaroo moving in. He's seemingly rather keen on getting up close, and he's still floating resources. I have no idea. Why he is doing that?
And a Shrim Man going out for Opium, going for the victory points, and let's just speed this up a bit. Forward OP is reporting a sector is under attack. Just where you contact. Ready. Ready. Looks like Shrimp Mag might be running into problems. No, it gets out of there in time. But Sanka moves towards the center. Still no real upgrade to sort of repair rates, it seems like, for Opium. But two victory points held. Once more draining away from WM. And going for the last one as well. Good job. Oh dear. Heavy damage to that stag hound. And Piet Sapper's getting blown to bits. All very tragic. Kangaroo filled to the brim with anti tank weapons. Piet and Panther Shrex. Doesn't avail them much. Lieutenant, in fact, dies inside the kangaroo. Now they're trying to knock out that panther, which is defensive veteran did too. And of course, the support of panther is nearby as well. Heavy losses to the British. Looks like Opium has this one in hand. Although he's now German losing all of those three victory points again. WM pushing hard. Panther for some reason getting sent in on its own. He must be feeling very confident at the moment, Opium. Otherwise I don't think he'd be doing that. A Yak Panther, that's quite interesting. Could do a lot of damage to those pesky British up. If you can actually get it moving. I still don't think we're actually seeing any expert repairs going on here. Are we? Sampa's going down to the Panthers here, going for the victory point. Yak Panther still not moving. Yak Panther though itself, while quite iconic, was actually mostly used on the Western Front. It was only in the very last few months of the war that it actually arrived on the Eastern Front. Fun little fact. The Hetz, on the other hand, of course, saw more action on the Eastern Front and much earlier on than he did on the Western Front. Stagham moving in right into the Yak Panther. Sappers moving in, Infantrix moving in, all the anti tank assets being pulled in, but Panther and Yuck Panther are there to save the day. And the Infantry, oh my goodness, it's getting crushed beneath the treads of the Panther. And it just sort of turns over and squishes them. Oh, the indecency. Stagham in trouble, British troops in trouble. And there we go, game over, a victory for the 12th SS in the Lowlands, the armoured guards lost. Some pretty nasty German armour despite pulling in all they could. So I mean, there we go, game over, a victory, but what can we learn from this? I think the problem was rather in this case the British commander sort of bunched up too much with kangaroos and whatever else. In that sense, while he was strong, it was only in very few points. And when he did finally try to attack again, it was sort of straight at the base, which he then lost. So he sort of had some good ideas, but couldn't quite manage them. He failed to defend his victory points. No Vickers, no Bullforce or anything. He probably would have done better with some replacements and a probably a casualty claim station closer to the action. Opium, on the other hand, was right to see, of course, that he needed to fight his opponent by sort of trying to be everywhere else, by constantly sort of forcing him to run from here to there, and sort of catching him from time to time with some nasty things like lots of Panthers and Panthers. So I do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not turn in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane, St. Cheers.